a very good cold fall morning everyone welcome to the driveway today's video is going to be a bit of a fleet update as well as some pretty big news surrounding the future of the channel and just kind of what i've been up to that'll all come later first we're going to go around and look at all my cars that are here right now, some cars that are here that aren't mine, and talk about the cars that aren't here. Starting with my daily, the E92, it exists. In the last episode, we did some maintenance. As soon as we came home, it blew off a coolant hose, just just completely blew it off, like it was disconnected. I, I took it off, looked it over, hooked it back up, and it's been fine. I'm gonna guess a year and a half ago, whoever put it on just didn't do it quite right, and it held until now. At least that's what I'm choosing to believe. Maybe it's because Tyler sat in this car and, and that blew it up. I don't know. He's got the magic touch. Uh, coming up with this, um, lots left to do here as far as things in the future. Um, this uh, collective crucible of suffering is not mine, thank heavens. This is a Porsche 955 Turbo, so V8 twin turbo, Porsche Cayenne, uh, Rothmans livery, quite broken. Uh, that's why it's sitting here with the hood up and a battery tender because it's got some problems that I'm diagnosing for a friend. Gonna do a video on that as soon as it's warm enough to actually do anything with this, which is hopefully gonna be this weekend. Then in the garage, I'm rushing through this because it's literally, it's like 30 degrees out here and I'm very, very over this. By the way, uh, Craftsman, MyQ, whatever, Chamberlain, they don't sell the gateway anymore for HomeKit, and then they just changed all their servers around so that now there's no way to get HomeKit working through a third-party means with their garage door opener. So don't buy them, they're absolutely terrible. I just want my phone to open my garage door without their stupid app that makes me look at ads to open my garage door. Anyway, rant over. So here we've got the Jortsmobile staying in here where it can't get dirty because it's got black paint and I am so stinking tired of cleaning this car every time I take it out. Even in here, it's gotten dusty. You look at it and it's like brown from certain angles. This thing's probably not gonna be sticking around for much longer. Probably gonna be looking to offload this in the spring once I get new shocks in here and fix the AC. Um, you know, it's a, it's a dream car and I've, I've, I've done what I wanted to with it and I've had the experience, so someone else can have a really, really sorted C5 when I'm done with this. What's not going anywhere is the Aprilia Tuano. I really, really like this thing. I wanna do some touring with it uh, in the coming next year. So uh, hopefully it doesn't deteriorate too much sitting here in the garage while it is freezing winter cold all winter and apparently fall as well. I did actually manage to fit both these in here in a way where I can get either one of them out I'm kind of impressed I managed that, given how thick this thing is and how tiny my garage is. Anyway, moving on, everyone's been asking about the Insight. Went and picked this up down in Houston, brought it back here, and it's sat here because this thing is um, garbage. Actually, I paid way too much for this, and it is in way too bad a shape. Um, I will be fixing it up eventually my my excitement for this just kind of completely died from the process of getting it back here uh, to wichita and and the fact that on top of all of the mechanical issues it has it also has significant body issues as well it needs like full repaint to look even remotely presentable so there's a lot of work to get this just to the point that my old one was in and uh, we'll get there eventually but we can't get this into the shop until we deal with this thing the ranger this, this, this. I sold my old two-wheel drive Ranger and bought this four-wheel drive once because I wanted to go off-roading and in order for a long wheelbase, long bed Ranger to go off-roading, it's gonna need a lift kit. And everyone tells me that the long bed is oh, so inappropriate for off-roading, but it's actually the exact same wheelbase as a four-door Wrangler. So uh, yeah, you never see people off-roading those. But putting the lift kit on involves lots of heavy work because you've got to relocate effectively all of the mounting points for the front suspension and then new leaf springs for the rear. The leaf springs are actually broken on this truck, which is why I got recurved leaf springs for with my lift kit. So 
yeah, I, I'm just not equipped for this sort of work. I, I got it apart to the point where it won't move, and I haven't been able to get enough help to put it back together so I can get it on a trailer, so I can get it to a shop, so they can install the lift kit. End result, I'm going to be like seven grand into a $2,000 truck, but it'll be my truck. And that'll be cool. Something else I need to get on a trailer and get the heck out of here is the Miata, my 2008 NC, fully loaded, every feature, including a blown engine. Uh, these early two liters have non-staked rod bearings, and so they, are very, they spin very, very easily, and this one did the thing. So I've got a 2.5 on the engine stand in there, but the powertrain has to drop out the bottom, so this is something that we're going to have to do with the Wizards. Probably this winter, um, because the Wizard has heat, but he does not have AC, so I didn't want to do it during the summer. And um, yeah, externally the engines are the exact same. Ford Fusion engine just slots right in, and you get a lot more torque. <sighs> Lots going on in here, a lot of it not mine. Uh, we've got the e-bike, which you've all seen before, and we've got my mini bike, which you've all seen before. This is... This is Tyler Grimes' uh, bike. It's a Aprilia Pegaso. He's, he's learning very quickly that carbs suck on bikes. So we'll see if this thing ever goes back together again. But it's a very cool thing. It's the same as a BMW F650. So it is an off-road adventure bike. I actually really want something like this, but um, not this one. We, he did replace the um, water pump seal and a couple other common things on here. So at least now the engine isn't just fluids everywhere but um, we can't make it run quite right. Uh, this is also, well, this is mine, but it's, uh, this is a cheap Chinese scooter that I bought for $100. Um, I bought it for Tyler's dad, actually. He doesn't have a license and his scooter got stolen. So I bought this for us to fix up for him. Uh, might do a video on that when we get around to it. And then moving back, we have Future Project. We have the moped, which, I literally have not touched in months because I'm just so fed up with trying to get it to work. Uh, we have the Ducati, uh, no compression on the front cylinder. I need to pull the head and see what's going on there. Once I get it fixed, this thing will also be for sale in the spring, most likely. I just, I, I don't need two two-wheeled Italian monstrosities sitting around taking up all my time and money. Uh, moving back, we have more future projects. Well, maybe not, I don't know. I might not do anything with this. Uh, we've got the engine for the Miata, a spare engine for the Insight, a moped engine. I have no idea why I bought 150cc GY6, but there's a brand new 150cc GY6 back there. I thought I was going to put it on this old Suzuki. I don't know if I'm going to do that anymore. We've got a new intake manifold for the BMW. We've got... Ooh! I bought a drill press. I really like my drill press. It has lasers on it, and it was really cheap at Harbor Freight, because of course I would buy a drill press at Harbor Freight. Um, more projects of, uh, of Tyler's. We have, what is this, a hub motor? Kind of nice looking, actually. I like the white tire and the red wheel. Um, yet another Razor scooter, my welder, and my mini bike, and some trash I haven't put away yet. It's, you know, it's stuff. Now is for something interesting, because um, I haven't actually seen my wrecked Insight in quite a while, and I know there's a whole lot of stray cats here, and I wonder how many are about to run out of here as soon as I open this. Well, it doesn't smell too much like cat pee, um, but yeah, there's, there's the old Insight. Uh, it's chilling. Oh wow, I forgot I took the wheel off. So one of my jack stands has been under here this whole time. That's certainly something. Okay, let's shut this. There we go. Oh, and the car that's not here, the uh, E46, that's still fine. It's at about 275,000 miles. Uh, and it's actually running great. Only issues are it needs motor mounts and the exhaust camshaft position sensor, which I have ordered and then we probably ought to do a flywheel in it at some point. They have dual mass flywheels, and after 275,000 miles, that dual mass flywheel is, well, it's, it's not doing great. 
Uh, so for the thing that everyone's asked about that I've never talked about, this headache and pile of misery is like a 78. 280ZX 2 plus 2, I got it for free with big plans of swapping a 302 into it. And at this point, there's another litter of cats under there. <laughs> That's the second litter of cats to be born under this thing. This is a completely rusted out shell. Like I was going to put it on a truck frame. I was going to do a whole bunch of stuff, but it's just so far gone. The brake lines are all rusted out. The wheels barely turn even when you pull it. Like the only good thing about this is the glass. So if anyone's in Wichita, come come grab this if you need Z parts. There's nothing in the interior. There's nothing in the engine bay. There's a drive shaft spinning lazily underneath it. I just don't have the capacity for projects of this scale anymore. Well, I, let's be honest, I never did. But now I'm not deluding myself into thinking that I do. So if anyone wants a beige Datsun, come get it before I scrap it in the spring probably. Also likewise, before nature takes this over, I do have a title for that. So if you're gonna make some crazy gambler project, I do have a title. Uh, and then there's this thing, which is a Yamaha V-Star 650 that has no title and hasn't run in years. Um, also going to the scrapper if, if someone doesn't wanna come pick it up. Free garbage, yay. I don't have the time anymore. Now we're gonna go inside and talk about why I don't have the time anymore, cause it's cold out here, bye. So we're gonna wind back the clock a little bit for context here. For the last seven or no, more like 10 years, my day job has been IT related and the last four of those have been at what's called a managed services provider. And this is a company that provides IT services to small and medium sized businesses that can't afford or don't want to afford an in-house IT team and instead want the benefit of a team of people looking after their stuff without the cost and hassle of actually finding and employing good people for that. And that's where we come in. A pretty common thing, lots and lots of MSPs around, even here in Wichita, there's quite a few. For the last three or so years, I've just been going and seeing clients and making sure that their IT needs are met. But recently, my boss actually approached me with an offer to move into a different role, a, a higher up role, more of a, we'll call it administrative sort of, more of a, CTO role and he knew for the last three years I would be way happier in that position than where I was because somehow he can just see into my soul I guess. So naturally I took the offer and I am you know promotion sure probably more money why not and it sounded like fun because then I'd get to do more like working with our tools figuring out our toolkit scripting doing stuff like figuring out how best to apply our tools what our standard operating procedures should be I think, uh, I think that's more or less what the job description is. We're actually still working on the job description for that. So cool, new position at the day job. I was pretty stoked about that. And then I get a text from Tyler Hoover, who I've been friends with for quite a while now. He's like, hey, come work with me. I need help with stuff. And I don't know how many people realize this, but up until very recently, uh, Tyler's been doing everything himself. Car issues, car, well, I guess car truck was him and others, uh, and Hoovy's garage and all the logistics surrounding all of that. It's just been him. And he was wanting to diversify and do a few new things as well as just, you know, have a little more free time. So he wanted me to come on board to help out with car stuff and camera stuff and technology stuff, which is a pretty perfect overlap of the Venn diagram of uh, what I'm good at. So cool. Now I have a decision to make. Do I stick with the day job with something I've invested a lot of time and effort into and a boss that I genuinely like, like my boss at my day job is fantastic. So I had to kind of decide, you know, what was I going to do? And me being the stable genius that I am, Went with both. I'm just gonna do both. 
And the way that works is the CTO role is pretty much entirely remote and work from home. I mean, there's nothing that really requires me to be on site at any time except for meetings and maybe the occasional come to Jesus moment with a client where, oh my gosh, we really need to fix your infrastructure or something to that effect. So I figured, yeah, I can sit at home in the evenings and write my fun little scripts and read up on all the latest technologies that MSPs are moving towards and security defaults and things of that nature. And then during the days, I can hang out with my friend Tyler Hoover and film stuff for him. Seems easy enough. And that's the story of how I went from a four-day work week where I was typically done with work by two to a seven-day work week where I'm always at it. But honestly, there's enough variety in what I'm doing here that I don't think I'm going to burn out anytime soon. I mean, messing with computers and filming car stuff and editing car videos are two pretty different workflows, and it, it makes one feel like a break from the other, and I can just kind of keep going. So if you've seen Good Morning YouTube, that is Tyler's latest project. It's a talk show with him and supermodel April Rose, and me behind the camera and behind the computer doing the editing and the filming. We built a whole film set. We got cameras. We've got an FX30 and a couple A6500s. G Master lenses. It's a really nice setup. Bit of learning that I've had to do, but the edits are getting smoother and smoother as we go, and it's actually a lot of fun. And hey, I mean, I get to hang out with a friend all day, and we make cool stuff. It's fun. So, with how busy I am with all this, I should probably talk about how things are going to change on the channel. Upload schedule is going to get a lot less regular because the channel previously has been a big source of income, not so much making my bills or anything, but it was the only way that I could afford to have a hobby. Despite the tech role, uh, wages in Wichita are pretty depressed in general. Even though the cost of living is low, the cost of living has ballooned you know, quicker than wages, of course. And then my living situation kind of got a lot more expensive than it was previously. So now that I'm no longer having to pinch pennies, I mean, I'm still going to pinch pennies because uh, I like not having to worry about my water heater bankrupting me. So now that I'm not relying on the income as much, I can stop pandering to the algorithm a little bit and make more of the sort of videos that I want to, which are a little bit higher production value and just kind of less, oh, my car broke, I have to film it because I need the content. So little piddly stuff I'll be able to just fix off screen, off camera, and some of the more interesting things, things that I'm more excited to share with you guys, I'll be able to take my time and make better content on. I don't know if you noticed, but the video quality of this video is quite a bit better than past videos. That's because we've got my, uh, well, I, I guess it's, it's right back there, my Sony A7 Mark III on my, what is that? A Zwin something? Gimbal? I don't know. It's a full frame camera on a gimbal being held by my girlfriend who did a great job now that I'm reviewing the footage, actually. I might need her to film more stuff for me. But I want to have more of that higher production value stuff, do more interesting things, maybe more product reviews. Those seem to do really well. I never feel super confident when I'm doing a product review, um, but for whatever reason, they seem to perform all right and people seem to like them so that's kind of interesting probably my weakest part there is reciting specs i'm really bad at memorizing that sort of thing and i'm not really sure why everyone does that because if someone's seeking out a review they probably already know the spec sheet why am i repeating it to you the hardest part of reviews is thinking of something to add to the conversation that hasn't been said 30 times before so yeah We'll see how creative I can be if I do any more product reviews. I've got a couple in the pipeline uh, just because I've already got the product and done the review, and they are a lot higher effort than some previous reviews, so I'm kind of excited to get those out. But mostly it's just kind of going to be vibes and seeing where things are going. I've been really into personal electric vehicles lately, like my Razor scooters and whatnot. I've got a couple videos involving those. I also have some larger EV projects that I'm working on, and one thing that is a EV adjacent project that I'm fairly convinced nobody on YouTube has ever done before. So once I get the money saved up for that, you can keep a lookout for that project coming up. I definitely like to be doing some more fabrication stuff in my shop. And I got a drill press. I have a welder. I need to get a better welder. That thing's 110 volt flux core. It's rough. This is really this is this is really just an abstract collection of thoughts, isn't it? Want to see my editing station? 
First of all, I apologize, the lighting in here is real bad. So, the nexus of everything is my MacBook Pro here. This is an M1. Um, I think this is the second brand new Mac that I bought. I had an M1 Mac Mini that I bought when those first came out, and then I sold it and replaced it with this guy. One of the best screens you can get on a laptop, one of the best touchpads you can get on a laptop, and an extremely good keyboard. And the battery life is pretty well unmatched. Got that hooked up to a little dock here. Uh, SD card in, in, in that boy. Um, the dock uh, connects it to my random Sony TV that I have mounted to the wall. I put my view my views up there um, from Final Cut, and then I have my timeline down here, and then this stuff all changes depending on what exactly I'm doing, whether it be layout or effects or sound or what have you. Uh, we've got a Keychron uh, key keyboard here with linear switches. I'm on the fence about buying some ceramic keycaps for it because ceramic keycaps, they, they seem nice. <laughs> I, I recently got this thing. I still can't break the 130 word per minute barrier on it, but uh, hey, you know what? It does the job, saves wear and tear on my Max keyboard, especially because I do use this thing portable quite frequently. Over here, we've got the Magic Trackpad. Big big trackpad absolutely fantastic of course uh then we've got mouse if i want to use it this is a g604 i've had three logitech g602s and i just i love the whole layout the the shape all these buttons are fantastic you know copy paste next tab previous tab forward and back uh, then i've got my gaming mouse and a key, clicky keyboard those are connected to my gaming pc down here i never use that and then over here we've got a stream deck which I've got set up with a bunch of uh, commonly used shortcuts. So when I'm editing, I just kind of have my left hand over here and my right hand over here, and I need almost never touch the keyboard, and can really bang through the edits pretty quickly that way. And then I've got this that lights my face up when I'm filming these sequences. Oh yeah, and uh, sound editing foam, because it looks cool, and it prevents echoes. So there we go, there's an update on everything. You saw where the magic happens, and uh, yeah, I work for Tyler Hoover now, and I'm CTO at a tech company. How did th how did this happen? What does this actually mean? I, I This is all so new, I don't actually have a solid idea of what all this means. So watch this space, I guess. Maybe you'll see something cool. Maybe you'll get to watch me go insane in real time. Either way, it'll be fun! Thanks for watching.